when they see that word dwelling richly within you, then they will see Christ. They'll never see him any other way except in you and me. Walking down that factory in that factory or up in that shop, sitting at a desk typing, if you're born again of God's Spirit, Christ's there with you. Now, he's not going to do the typing for you. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah, it'd be awful. But he's there, and God is at work within you to will and to what? His good pleasure, because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. God in Christ, Christ in you, and you are a son of God. Boy, what a word, what a word, what a renewed mind. Boy, when you realize that you have what the Word of God says you have, now if you, that's not true, you haven't got the new birth either. Because you just can't pick me John 3, 16, or Romans 10, 9 and 10, and then drop the rest of the Word. It's either God's Word or it isn't. Just imagine how that early church must have blessed the people because they were big enough or humble enough to believe that what God said he meant and what he meant he said. Even to the end that they so electrified the community by their walk that people said, if I could just put my sick buddy over here and at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when Peter goes by, the sun will be over here in the west, hit Peter about here, his shadow will go over there, and if I can get him within 10 feet of where Peter's going by, God will heal him. That's what I call believing. We haven't seen this in our country. I've seen fragments of it among our people, but it's still small. But I'm looking for the day again when this word of God will have such preeminence in communities that when you people walk there, they'll know God in Christ is walking there and they'll just get blessed so abundantly because you're there. You already bless the place even if they don't know it, but you bless it by your presence. That's right. Says some place in the Gospels even, if you enter in a certain place with the Word of God and you love people and all the rest of it, they don't like you. Just let the curse be on the house. You go on out and shake the dust off your feet and find you another place. Because whenever you walk into a home with that love of God and you're in alignment and harmony, you bring Christ into that home. Because it's you. That's what Peter was trying, uh, Paul was trying to tell Peter. It's not a matter of the circumcision gang. It's not a matter of whether you eat mashed potatoes or millet. <laughs> Isn't that something? Christ liveth where? In me. Christ liveth in me. That's quite something. Christ living in you is one thing. You living in Christ and making it real is the renewed mind trip. And the life, the life, the life which I now live, I now live since I'm a Christian with Christ in me, the life which I now live in the flesh, in the senses category, I live by the believing the pistis of the Son of God. I live by the believing. What he believed for, what Jesus Christ believed for and accomplished, now since I'm born again, I live by that believing what he accomplished for me. That's what he's saying. Who loved me and who gave himself what? For me. That's right. It is Jesus Christ who gave himself for us. It is Jesus Christ who loved us. It is he who died for us. And if he gave himself for me, then I do not have to give me for me. 
You know, I do not have to do the good works that he did because the good works he did I could not do because I'd blow it right and left, you know. Now, I'm obligated to the Father because I'm born again to do good works, but not the works Christ did. People talk about you have to bear all these crosses. Well, then what did he bear them for? If he bore the cross for you, then if you think you have to bear it, then something's wrong. Either the word of God's a lie or you are. He became sin that you and I might become what? The righteousness of God in him. How righteous is that? The world will never let you remember that. They'll tell you how unrighteous you are. They'll tell you what a stinker you are. A nincompoop and a no-gooder. They will remind you of things you did 20 years ago. Really neat, isn't it? You know, the mind of man is just about that wide, most of them. Sometimes I think that wide. Men will always remember, you know, even today, if you would make a mistake and do anything wrong, they'd sure remember that. But how about the hundreds of times you blessed them, prayed for them, and loved them? That one they just don't seem to remember. That's man. You know, it's sort of neat when you so renew your mind how you can put up with people. It gets to the place they don't even bother you. You don't like it, you know. You'd rather have blueberry pie with ice cream, but you, you know, they don't stop you. <laughs> really something. New Knoxville called, they tell me, and wonder why we're pumping all the water out of the ground. They're mad. Don't bother me any. Let them put in some stupid pumps. They lived off of the, the hydro, you know, the thing blowing out of the top of the ground by itself for 40 years, never spent a quarter to put a well in. Why don't they put a well in? They're mad at me. I didn't put the water in the ground. <laughs> That's something. Well, they can just be good and me. Right. Somebody else this week told me what kind of devilish man my father was. Yeah. And I suppose if this fella really... I don't think he's ever done anything that's worth looking at for the Lord in all the years I've known him. At least my father walked. At least he did some wonderful things. Now, he may have been an income poop at that one incident. I don't know. But I'll tell you something. I don't give a hoot because it was 50 years ago. And that's a hell of a long time to remember something. <laughs> you know, isn't that, man, you must have a squeezed mind <laughs> to try to remember something that somebody, in your opinion, mistreated you on 50 years ago? <laughs> Thought to myself how grateful I am that it is by grace and that no man has to stand before any other man, but he has to stand before God. And these people that yak this week, they still going to stand before God. Right now they think, you know, they're big wigs, they rule the thing. They could buy and sell what they want to. But you know something? When that time comes, no man buys or sells much of anything. He's just very thankful if he's even breathing. And there's one sure thing. When it comes to the material realm, nobody's going to take it with them. You can leave her here at the government. That's okay with me. Because you've been so used to paying them while you're living, you might as well stay acclimatized when you're dead. Get so accustomed to it. That was Will Rogers said that. <laughs> that's, that's not the Lord speaking of it. 